。嘅時間到啦，而出席嘅人數亦。It's now the meeting time, and we have a quorum. And this is a policy briefing come meeting by teleconferencing as the first meeting at a year of the tiger. And I wish everyone good health and success. Since this is a video conference, may I remind members? That when you speak, you must activate your Zoom camera and show your face, and use the designated color virtual background. For those members produced by EC, please use orange. Members produced returned by the functional constituency, green, and members elected by GC, purple. The microphone will only be turned on when I order. Simultaneous interpretation is provided for this meeting. Participants can choose the language channel, and the mini proceedings will be live streamed on the LegCo website. For a fair and orderly. Arrangement of members to speak and urge the staff to clear the virtual hands pressed by the members. And now, members who would like to speak, please press the raise hand function in Zoom, and I will invite the members to speak in turns. First item: briefing by the Secretary of Development on the Chief Executive 2021 Policy Address. The administration has produced a paper as well as a PowerPoint. We shall discuss this till 4 p.m. Depends on the number of speakers. I believe there's quite a lot of members are interested, and I shall read out the list later. While、well, each member shall have four minutes, question and answers included. I will be quite strict due to the large number of speakers. And, and secretary, so you will show us a PowerPoint. Well, at the beginning of this year, I wish everyone a good health, and so that we can serve the Hong Kong public better. I will show you a brief PowerPoint that will take about just five to six minutes, just to let you have a some cap of the policy address. Well, looking at the housing supply. We shall look at the 2030 plus study, and our latest land use demand projection is around 5,800 to 6,200 hectares. Compared to a few years ago, when we first launched the 2030 plus, the land use estimate back then was 4,800 hectares. Some in the community viewed that is seriously under an estimated. In terms of supply, after a few years of hard work. Our overall supply can reach as high as seven thousand three hundred hectares, and was actually exceeded our projected demand by over ten percent, which I see as appropriate, as we need to build up a land reserve, and for the more longer term projects, we need a solidarity to push ahead. For the medium to long term. Uh, Forty-one hundred、uh, hectares. It, one was the Kauai Chow Artificial Islands, one thousand hectares at the northern metropolis, about two thousand three hundred hectares. These two projects were made up of our medium to long-term supply of about eighty percent. You can see these why two these projects are so important to Hong Kong. And now on the northern metropolis. We have 
uh, started working on the strategy and for the scope of the studies of the Sun Tin Lok Ma Chow Anti North Neutral and Man Kam Chow commenced in 2021. And while well, our parameters and the and our scope has now been set for Sun Tin Lok Ma Chow study, we aim to complete within two years. As for the Man Kam Chow, that we need to take about 36 months. And for two other studies, shall start within 2022. For the La Fao Shan, Sim Pei and Pak Nai area, as we cannot include in any nearby study, therefore we need to create a new one. And for the Kutung North and Ma Chou Long area, these two studies can commence within this year. And this will take within about 24 months. For the Yunlong South, and we have started the construction for the detailed construction engineering design, we hope to seek funding approval from Let's Go. And our target is to commence the works within 2022, and we look forward to your support. And now for the artificial islands in the central waters. The study has commenced in June 2022, and I hope that by late uh, Q4 this year, we can make some preliminary proposals on reclamation extent, land use, transportation infrastructure, uh, routing, and the financial options. And we will we'll listen to LegCo and the public. On the timetable, we plan to commence reclamation in 2027. We're looking into streamlining certain procedures if the streamlining is successful, we can advance the reclamation to 2026. Well, we aim to allow population intake by 2034. If we can advance the timetable, then we can have the first intake by 2033. And for the new shore reclamation projects, the Longku Chan reclamation. And the uh, replanting of the Chunmen West are highly correlated. So by this year, within this year, we can seek funding to start a study. And for the Malusi reclamation, that we hope that within this year, we can start a study on that. If everything goes smoothly, by 2027 or earlier, we can start the reclamation on these two projects. We have commenced a new round of the Green Belt Review to examine the alternative and land use potential of about 300 hectares of Green Belt zones. Well, all over Hong Kong, there are about uh, 16,000 hectares of Green Belt, and for 300 hectares, about 2%. Well, uh, in around mid-2022, we can have some preliminary findings. Then of the land identified with potential, we can conduct a technical studies on them. A lot of people cared about the land resumption. As you can see from this table, you can notice that we have accelerated the pace in 2024 to 2018-19 for this five years altogether we managed to resume just 20 hectares so about like just a few hectares per year and for the past three years from 2019-20 2021-22 I believe that we can resume as much as 120 hectares let's say about 40 hectares per year probably that's a major um, improvement from the past and looking forward from 20, before 2030, we can resume our 700 hectares. And for the next five years, there will be about 500 hectares, 100 hectares per year. Well, compared to 40 hectares per year, you can see this with another major increase. Urban renewal. Well, uh, in terms of the developed district, we need to uh, renew the area out of uh, optimal use of land. 
and also you need to cope with the problem of the rapidly aging housing stock. And the recently completed district planning study for Yamate and Mong Kok, the urban renewal will have authority and also we shall kickstart the urban uh, town planning procedures. For example, uh, we hope to initiate certain amendments to the relevant outline zoning plans to permit the interchangeability between domestic and non-domestic plot ratio and increase the plot ratio for Nathan Road commercial spine. And by next year, the Urban Renewal Authority will propose uh, some of the uh, rezoning uh, proposals. And in invitation of the government, uh, they will also conduct a district study on Chinwan and Sam Shui Po. They are already preparing for the district study and hopefully it can start within this year. Besides every renewal, besides the URA, Well, on the compulsory uh, cell operations is a major issue. The government has uh, kick-start a, pol a policy research. Hopefully, at around mid-2022, we can come up with the proposals so that we can consult the public and let's go. Well, prim primarily, well, uh, should building of different ages have different compulsory cell thresholds? And whether we have any room to streamline existing legal processes. And for these procedures that are related to development, I suppose that the further streamlining is a key task of our bureau. Well, not just our bureau, and other policy bureau like the uh, Transport Housing Bureau and Environment Bureau have joined the steering group. We have been quite successful in this. Hope like by next month, that during the next panel meeting, well, for example, on streamlining and shortening statutory procedures and avoiding repetitive procedures and provide express money for departments to conduct the process in, in parallel and rational or obsolete or ambiguous arrangements. For these uh, concrete proposals, we will come to this uh, panel for a consultation. And we have also uh, expedited this process with the help of the Department of Justice, and um, they have assigned a drafting staff to help us. Once we finalize the proposals, that we will uh, submit an amendment bill for logical deliberations. Well, that probably would take a more than a sec that will probably uh, complete the drafting in a few months. The standard rate premium arrangements that after its launch in March 2021, well, this applied to the redevelopment of industrial buildings. And we see that it's been quite well received by the property sector. And therefore, according to the policy address, that the standard rates arrangement will be expanded to in situ land exchange application in new development areas. We are working out the details and hopefully by the end of next month, if not earlier, that we can make it public. Single site multiple use. The approach to uh, uh, pursue government institution and community projects with multiple public facilities under the single site multiple use principles start to bear fruit. Well, uh, within this year, one of the pilot projects, which is the joint user complex at the former Anderson Road Quarry, will provide a sports leisure, social welfare facilities to the community. Uh, we hope to uh, seek funding approval from the within this year to kickstart the construction. 
for other uh, SSMU projects, we're actively uh, taking forward the uh, uh, planning. Capital Works. I'd like to thank the Legislative Council for approving funding for public works projects to the tune of $230 billion in 2020-21. We expect the government's annual capital expenditure to continue to increase and exceed $100 billion in coming years. We believe this is an important investment for Hong Kong. This is not an expenditure. Some universities have done research to show that for every $100 capital works investment, the return is much more than $100. And if you are talking about major infrastructure building, like airport, um, the return is like $400 for every $100 investment. So we are going to continue to do this, and we will roll them out as soon as possible with your approval. But we're going to do it in an orderly manner so that we will not flood the industry with projects or starve it when there are no projects from the government. Construction 2.0. Through new innovation, professionalization, and revitalization, we hope the construction industry to continue to reform itself. As you know, the industry is aging. We can cooperate with the CIC to attract young people to join the trade, and we can also make use of technology, especially innovation technology to enhance the industry's productivity. This is an important task for us. Uh, we have the digitalization of public works, and uh, I think I have detailed those initiatives just last week at LegCo, so I'm not going to repeat them, but I hope you will give us your support because it's so important for Hong Kong's development. Lastly, heritage and uh, conservation, and then Harbor for an enhancement. We have already launched six phases of revitalization projects involving 22 historical buildings. At different times, we have already injected over $2 billion, and we only have $200 million more, but I think we'll be able to complete the revitalization projects. Ever since its launch, it was well received by the community, and whenever we identify appropriate historical buildings in future, we'll continue with the project. And we will seek to put more money into the Built Heritage Conservation Fund where appropriate, and I hope you will give us your support. Lastly, the Harbour Front. In the last year, we had a leap year, let's say. Within 15 months, we launched 60 optimization or improvement projects for the benefit of the public. We are talking about a, pro a harbour front of 38 hectares, which can be improved. Altogether, there is a 73 hectare length of the harbour front, but then there are 30-something hectares that cannot be used because they are uh, used for cargo handling, etc. In the time to come, we can lengthen the promenade by another kilometer. Now, in the upcoming development panel, we will consult members on the open space at Eastern Street North, Sai Ying Pun. Well, some people are mistaken that we are only working on the north shore of Hong Kong Island. But as you know, there are other works projects like the Sha Tin Central Line, where works space has been returned to the government. But in fact, there is a lot of harbourfront land on Kowloon's side. And in fact, there would be more projects that will be completed this year on Kowloon's side. So, it is not that we have just concentrated on Hong Kong Island, and in fact, there will be some work done uh, near Chin Wan. That is my briefing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Secretary, for your briefing using uh, the PowerPoint.
The PowerPoint will be distributed to members shortly. Now it is time for members to speak. I will let you know the order. We have got 15 members who have recorded their intention to speak. This is the order. Vincent Chang, Lo Wai Kwok, Alice Mack, Wong Yun Shan, Fok Hai Kwong, Michael Tian, Leong He, Lam Siu Lo, Hong Man, Ng Chiu Pak, and Liu Yip, Kenneth Lau, Yong Hon Biu, Chen Hock Fong, and Lau Kwok Fan, Chen Ka Pui. As I said, four minutes for each member, including the reply. Vincent Chang. Thank you, Chair. Secretary, my question is on urban renewal. I need to declare that I am a non-executive director of the URA. I'd like to talk about Yao Wang. In your paper, you said in para 7 that uh, there should be amendments to the relevant OZP in 2022, and also you may be able to have some transfer of plot ratio involving business land. We have been waiting for this for long, and uh, we are very glad to see some progress. You said that you would be doing those this year, but I think what residents would like to know is when you can really start work to deliver something. Secondly, there are 3,000 buildings with 120,000 residents in Yao Wong and some in subdivided units. I have asked you what you are going to do about it. You said that in Kai Tech you would be reserving land for such SDU residents, but I don't think that will be sufficient. Therefore, my second question is, what are you going to do for the grassroots? Perhaps uh, it is difficult to provide subsidized housing in Yao Wong, but what more can you do? You are going to look into Shem Shui Po and Chun Wan. I like to say um, whether you can provide subsidized housing in Shem Shui Po so that it will act as some kind of support for Yao Wang. Secretary, thank you for this, those questions. On specific projects, I think um, that that can be announced only when the plans are ripe and mature. I remember URA said already very clearly that it might not have the capacity to engage in too many projects at one time. And also, if it is decided that certain um, increase in floor area or certain areas can be handed over. Actually, those will not just be for the URA. If members of the public would like to propose uh, certain land uses, they can do so. And as for your first question, with our communication with our URA, we know that perhaps next year it can propose certain projects. But uh, I think this is still the time for the URA to think it through. And when development takes place in certain districts and if there are SDU residents, well, the URA is very experienced in handling this. The URA had faced that before, and the government will give it a hand. Eligible SDU residents who can be rehoused in public housing will be assisted. But I must emphasize that we must go by certain rules. If people think that they can jump the queue in getting public housing by getting into an SDU, then the URA will state clearly that only in certain circumstances can these residents be rehoused in public housing. As for Shem Shui and Chin Wan, we will take that up with the URA again. If I remember correctly, that will take about two years. Um, a lot has to be researched into, and therefore I think that timetable is quite real. 
but we are not going to limit our vision to just one district. If, say, in Shem Shui Po, we should be able to find ways and means to move SDU residents from Chim, Yao Chim Wong to Shem Shui Po, then uh, we can do that at the appropriate time. Dr. Lo Wai Kwok, can you hear me? Yes. We can hear you very clearly. Thank you, Chair. The most important task for the Development Bureau is, of course, to find land. The industry and, and the sector supports you because uh, we like you to in increase and supply land for all uses. So whether you are going to build land from mountains, from the sea, and use cavens, I know that you are taking this multi-pronged approach. I like to make four demands and make one urgent appeal today. Secretary, you mentioned that you should orderly launch public works projects so that you will not flood the industry or starve it. Secondly, you should make good projections about human power and, and human resources. And three, you should deregulate in order to compress the procedure. And number four, which is important, that there should be coordination amongst bureaus. Let us not just have the land and then we'll have to wait a few years after population intake to have a railway station. Uh, these are the four demands and one urgent appeal. We have the fifth wave of the pandemic and in fact, the industry and the sector is experiencing a crisis. They have had a very difficult time in the last two years, and they thought that they were seeing a light at the end of the tunnel. But as you know, there was a, a, a total stoppage of projects and capital. But now they have weathered the storm, and then they thought that they were out of the woods. But then now we have another wave of the pandemic. And now at certain sites, uh, we have seen infections and workers contracting the disease. If we are going to experience the very dire difficulties again, well, I, I, well, we hope we can weather this. But then, Secretary, you must take a very close look at the situation and come to our rescue. In fact, because of the pandemic, Certain sites are seeing very slow progress. And can you do what you did? Say, if the delay is for half a year, you will not impose any penalty, uh, because I hope that you can help us tackle this hurdle together. And if uh, subsidies should be given, I hope the Bureau will do your very best to help the sector. Secretary, thank you, Dr. Lowe, for reminding us uh, what we should do. I subscribe totally to the four directions you mentioned, and it's not just the Development Bureau. In fact, all bureaus are working on the same front. We hope that we'll be able to show you figures later to let you know what we have done. And I also um, agree with your appeal. Uh, with regard to construction sites, as you know that at certain sites, some workers have been affected by the pandemic. Actually, at the um, trade associations, we have put together more inspection teams in order to inspect the sites to see how they are preventing the pandemic. Say, are they checking the workers upon entry? And what about arrangements of changing rooms and recreational um, facilities? And also whether there is sufficient space for workers to take the meals with proper social distancing. We'd like to thank the associations for helping. In fact, my observation is that Hong Kong sites are doing very well on, on these fronts, but will continue to do better. Dr. Lowe, you said that if there is 
um, an impact on business and work of the sector. As you know, Chairman, with regard to work, we already did this in the past. If indeed work is affected, well, then the completion date can be adjusted reasonably. Um, at present, we are not in a position to announce that the completion date can be delayed by half a year because it depends on the actual circumstances. But if certain sites are affected, we are always ready to consider something. I hope that we can work together uh, to ride out this storm. Well, uh, I hope that the uh, private companies can be more lenient in terms of dealing with um, lagging progress. Next, Ms. Alice Mack. Two questions. Well, for the uh, look, as for why you can streamline the procedures for uh, site identification, the way you can combine the very phase of the studies, I believe that there will be a uh, future agenda item. Therefore, I will not waste time on that. And I believe that other members may cover that for me. May I ask the Secretary, in the policy address, there was mentioned about, well, some talk about the hybrid front or the parent 110. There were no objecting or reviewing of this legislation that's over two decades. And the Secretary for Development shall initiate the discussion. So may I ask you when you will start the discussion? At the last term, let's go. I move a private member's bill or proposal to the government. If you refuse to start the discussion, then I will take forward my private member's bill in this term of let's go. May I know, uh, are you decide to go ahead or not? Otherwise, I'll take on the task. Next on redevelopment. We so all know that the Yao Chimwang and Mong Kok, the, there's a large scale re district planning study and there'll be a massive redevelopment. And now we have, will be a huge vacant site in the urban area. And now the Euro 8 rent reserve either need to work with private developers that the, the, the costs will be high and the, and the completed buildings are expensive. Well, then ERA may need to develop their own starter homes. For this large scale of study in Yap Chumang and Mongka, we invite the ERA to not only to develop a private uh, property or starter homes, we consider public housing, for example, subsidized rental flats or subsidized sales flats, so that we can have more public housing in urban areas. If they after this study, then there will all be private buildings, but no public housing. Uh, thank you, Chairman, and Ms. Max's question. On the protection of the harbor ordinance, the government once mentioned, well, looking for it, we need, need to assess the, whether there's a need for a large scale reclamation within Victoria Harbor for housing or land auction. Well, Secretary, I must interrupt you. Well, not just about uh, reclamation, the reviewing of the ordinance, not just for reclamation's sake. Okay, let me be quick, get to the point. Well, if there are any changes that might be about a road accessibility or related to the public space that we, then we can reconsider. And Ms. Mack just now pointed out the CE promised that we'll, we'll consider it. Well, Ms. Mack, however, for the past few months, We've been working so hard. We have a lot on our plate. On our plate, hopefully by the second half of this year, we can provide some directions or even proposals to consult LegCos. But right now, I would not like to reveal uh, what are the moments. I would promise there will be a review. And, and we will, shall reveal our position later. Well, maybe sometime before June, well, or maybe a, a second half of this year. Well, currently, uh, we're working mostly on uh, uh, the initiatives on boosting uh, housing supply. Let me touch on redevelopment. Well, there's a work division. In the past few years, the government has changed. In the past, URA did not engage in public housing projects. 
most recently, we look at the Macau way of the uh, Civil Servants Cooperative Society Redevelopment, we decide to introduce public housing. However, the supply may not be many. We need to invest work, research on the financial viability unless we change the policy of using lots of public money to subsidize urban renewal projects. If we want the, these kind of urban renewal projects to be financial, to be self-sustaining, well, for the public housing, let's say for public rental housing, all familiar with the housing letter at the top, well, one step below the private housing, there will be the starter homes. That's already subsidized housing. When it comes to individual projects, uh, Ms. Mac uh, will uh, uh, see changes. Right now, we're not ruling it out. However, for individual redevelopment projects of a high proportion of public housing, we feel that this may not be financially practical. Next, Ms. Dr. Wang Yun Shan. Thank you, Chairman. Th thank you, Secretary. So may I ask about the North Metropolis, in terms of planning and construction, how do you uh, demonstrate a close collaboration between Hong Kong and Shenzhen? When we talk about uh, two cities, and we don't talk about uh, the pl uh, Twin City Three Circles, we need to uh, align the planning of both cities. Well, on the planning of infrastructure uh, connecting Hong Kong and Shenzhen, for example, sewage, uh, power supply, and so on, I found that the Hong Kong side is lacking, which is a, a development bottleneck. For example, sewage. In 2016, the government proposed the anti North development. The study point out in uh, Peng Che sewage treatment work and to develop and come to you to expand the Shek Wu Hui sewage treatment plant. Six years on, we're yet to see any implementation plan. Secretary, and to take forward the integrated development of the Northern Metropolis, would you consider boosting the infrastructure proposal and timetable on the boundary area? We discussed with the central government of a co-building and co-sharing of infrastructure to uh, speed things up. Uh, well, traffic as power supply and water and sewage one example will be the uh, cross boundary rail. The Transport Housing Bureau will uh, set up with the central government of a uh, transport infrastructure task force. I wonder if you have something similar in your bureau. Uh, thank you for Dr. Wang's idea. Well, that's. Let me talk about the current situation. Well, at the macro perspective, well, uh, for the uh, Guangdong province, Guangzhou, and Shenzhen. Uh, we do have some uh, liaison groups of a very quite high level that were led by the department, bureau, the secretaries or the chief executives. That's the macro uh, the strategy for the northern metropolis. We'll talk about twin cities and three circles. For the west, we talk about serving modern service industries for the middle, a lot of uh, IIT, and for the east, there will be more uh, tourism. We are already considered uh, this strategy across the border. On the micro level for individual projects, well, the Hong Shui Ju Chen High Cross Boundary Rail, like Dr. Frank Chen said, we set a, a task force on that. And in the task force, will uh, liaise with Shenzhen. For the other projects on the North Metropolis, well, the brightest example that well, on the development of the River Loop Korean led by ITB. Well, both sides set up uh, companies to discuss these individual projects. As well, how do we complement the infrastructure? Well, uh, to further develop the each of the areas, for example, they need to have a cross boundary operator for the law. We, uh, whether we can uh, put the entire lower station on the Shenzhen side, that should be discussed in the task force. Well, as uh, well, in the. Uh, 
one foundation where you should make use of the mainland's infrastructure. For this a huge topic, I, I would not uh, take position lightly. When the mainland design infrastructure like the sewage system, they probably would not consider the demand of Hong Kong, although they would first consider the Shenzhen's demand. If we impose our demand on the Shenzhen side, that's not practical. And how to deal with the financial arrangements and so on. Well, uh, as a whole, we haven't quite considered that. Well, in, for the breakthrough in Northern Metropolis, in terms of planning for the Northern Metropolis, we already uh, set our vision uh, north of the Sanjian River. Therefore, the Twin Cities three circles have considered uh, Sanjian development and the GBA development and the 14th five year plan. For, and uh, we will uh, note these uh, ideas and whether can we implement them as specific projects. We sh I shall leave it to the future. Next, Mr. Kenneth Falk. And chairman and secretaries, good afternoon. Well, speaking of a micro perspective, well, I represent the performance of arts and publishing. Therefore, I am quite concerned about the construction of these kind of venues. Well, for the northern metropolis, it would become a large community of 2.5 million people, while the demand for arts and culture and sports will be huge. Well, this location would render it pretty at the nexus of the GBA. A defend link will build a major performance and rehearsal facility, something like a cultural center. I believe that the, it will be have a different a positioning of the West County Cultural District as mainly have a position itself as a. a exchange hub between Hong Kong and Guangzhou. Besides a different positioning, well, for a single venue, we may consider the car parks and transport infrastructure. Well, like Dr. Wang said that that uh, the positioning should be more focusing on GBA. Well, to become the cultural hub as set in the 14th February plan, this individual Hardware is not up. I urge the bureau that in those districts and in the planning process to allocate more land to build this uh, multiple uh, uh, sports and performing venue for, for um, historical archives and for example some kind of a cultural park for single site multiple use. I suppose that you can uh, nurture the cultural industry in this site. Well, uh, the CE mentioned that uh, we should actually expand the cultural industry. Next, on idle school sites, that we a lot on terms of their future uses. I've uh, done some research from the planning department as of the year uh, 2020 of uh, October. There are uh, 192 schools sites uh, that are in government sites or land should be returned to the government. About 38 sites, about 20% of these are not on any short-term tenancy and continue to sit vacant. A lot of the petitioners have to make use of this vacant or idle school sites that are quite suitable for the arts and cultural uh, groups. For example, the Typho Art Center and so on. If you can allow to lease out these sites on STT to different culture groups or uh, to string together some kind of a, a cultural itinerary. Well, I hope they can explain to my sector on how to apply the way they could. You can help with the application so that you can make optimal use of this adult site. I know some are still under control of ADB and some of them are under the development bureau. So I'd like to pose these questions for the secretary. Secretary, please be brief and thank you, Mr. Falk. For the arts and cultural venues, I agree with you, Mr. Falk. In light of the uh, North Metropolis development, some of the facilities may need to be upgraded. From the government's perspective, 
the uh, HAB is the policy bureau in charge of arts and culture. What the uh, planning and land allocation, we're happy to uh, complement to, to this meet the demand. I also agree that we should have multiple use on single site. On the STT arrangements, well, either you can arrange or I can arrange for you. Well, you can actually uh, find a list of these vacant school sites. As for uh, how do we explain to the uh, sector how to apply and what kind of policy support you need, I'm happy to explain. Let me take it up with Mr. Fogg after the meeting. Next one, Michael Tien. Chairman, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you clearly. Secretary, at this moment, what Hong Kong people are most concerned is that we are at a stage where if you are tested positive, you cannot go home, but then you can't go to a and &E department because it is already filled to capacity. No friends would like to take him in, and he can't find a hotel because hotels don't want him either, except quarantine hotels, and Penny's Bay is filled up. So what is most important is to make use of new technologies, including MIC, to build more quarantine camps. Uh, what is the progress? I know you are working on something. Originally, it was not so urgent, but now it is very urgent. And I know more people will get uh, tested positive, and then they may have to do home isolation. And then I'd like to talk about the opportunity for Northwest NT. As you know, in Hong Shui Q, there will be 20 million square feet made available. If you ask developers, to provide like 20% of the land area to afford short-term tenancies to non-technology, young startups, uh, whether you go for a dance studio or um, makeup, I think that should be considered because many young people are not working in the IT sector and they are worried about their upward mobility. I think this is a very good opportunity. Can you put that in the lease conditions? And also, um, Yen O, oh, you say you will consider the development. I have asked you to consider a race car or race course uh, because it is liked by many young people. And it is not an easy thing. You have to understand a lot of uh, different technologies, including wind power and others. And this is also one way for young people to climb the ladder of uh, success. Uh, are you doing anything about this? About the pandemic, the Center for Health Protection can contact us if they need our assistance in any way. Do you have a, a site? Uh, no, I don't think we can approach it like this. Well, it asked us for sites, but then it did not only ask for a site. In fact, we have to manage the site. We have to manage the risk. But have you identified any sites so far? Well, if the CHP needs more sites, like uh, the one at Penny's Bay, we'll certainly do our best. But has it told you that it wants more sites because people are now going through home quarantine. Well, Mr. Tian, I think we should ask the CHP whether they need our assistance. I don't think we should guess what they need us to do. As for site arrangements, with the revitalization of industrial buildings, if they like to have conversion, we may allow them to do it for free, but then we will ask them to take out 10% for cultural development. This is not applying to land sales. As you can see, if the arrangement is too complicated, then the land sale procedure will be quite different, and we have to approach this cautiously. But this is already done, and it only applies to revitalization of IBs. You know why I am interested in Hong Shui Q? Because there will be a railway going to Tianhai. Well, Rather than doing this at the land sale 
um, stage, I think Mr. Fok Hai Kong mentioned uh, more or less the same thing, but he was not pointing at Hong Shui Kiu. I think what he said would be simpler and easier to implement. As for Yan O, oh, I think a few months ago I had already answered this question of Mr. Tian. The situation is rather um, almost the same. It is still uh, on the agenda. But um, we have to approach other projects which will give us land for different developments earlier. When we have the resources, we can then uh, tackle Sunny Bay. Chairman, I still have time. No, actually, you have exceeded your time. Oh, sorry, sorry, I'll shut up. Never mind, uh, Mr. Leung He. Thank you, Chair. Can you hear me? Uh, we can hear you clearly. Just now, the Secretary pointed out that he would appoint consultants to do district based studies at Shen Shui Po and Xin Wan. But as you know, Sai Wan Ho on Hong Kong Island is also aging rapidly and it can also be redeveloped in a meaningful way. I'd like to know under what criteria will you kickstart the URA studies? Will you also do studies for Sai Wan Ho and Shao Kei Wan? Because Hong Kong Island residents would also like to see plans for urban renewal. Thank you, Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Leung. Talking about Shao Kei Wan, um, let me say I will put a marker on it because the URA is limited in capacity. It cannot engage on projects for all districts in Hong Kong at the same time. We chose Chin Wan because at, in the past, when it was planned, the highest plot ratio was only five. But as you know now in the urban area, it is 7.5 for, for domestic and 1.5 for non-domestic. And in Chin Wan, the plot ratio is obviously low. And as you know, Chin Wan is highly developed with a lot of transport infrastructure. And Sham Shui Po is also a very old district. I do thank the URA, and uh, it is very experienced. It will start these two studies this year. And for the longer term, we are not planning to stop these studies after we have done those for Sham Shui Po and Chin Wan. As Mr. Leung says, um, there are other old districts, but then we'll have to work within our means. We thank you for mentioning Shao Kei Wan. I'll put a marker on it, and we'll give it a consideration when the time is appropriate. Uh, Mr. Lem Shu Lo. Thank you, Chair. Secretary, in your paper, you mention many grand plans. We know we have to supply land in a timely manner. You also said that you would streamline the statutory procedures on many fronts, and I do appreciate that. In para 5, you talk about land resumption. You said that in the next five years, you will be resuming land um, to the tune of 2.5 times what you had been doing in previous years. Talking about land administration, we know we have statutory time and also statutory procedures for housing supply and other projects. But then talking about land administration, whether it is land resumption or land exchange, I know that there is no time limit for such. Many cases in the past have told us that um, they would just fade away without completion. Now, just now you talked about rules and also statutory procedures. Do you have a plan to also apply this to land administration. At least you should have performance pledges, or uh, are you thinking of going down the route of legislation? 
Secondly, heritage preservation. You said that you would consider with the partnership scheme to revitalize historical buildings. But talking about historic buildings, the focus had been on pre-war buildings. But in fact, the general study had been completed 20 odd years ago, but you have not done any general survey of post-war buildings. And I understand it has raised a lot of controversy because you apply different yardsticks. I'd like to ask you whether you will have resources and also the time to do a general survey of post-war buildings. Thank you, Mr. Lam. I thank him for supporting our work directions. Talking about a streamlining development control, I can say that this will involve land resumption procedures and laws. And as to whether there can be performance pledges, well, we do have them for certain uh, procedures. Can I defer to the Director of Lands? Uh, I'm Lai Chi Wa. Thank you, Mr. Lam, for uh, Mr. Lam, for your proposal. Well, in fact, you had been very targeted in your remark. Indeed, we don't have a very clear time limit for raising objections to land proposals. If we were to streamline the procedures, we are considering actively with the bureau whether there is room for improving the situation. Say, for example, in tackling objections, should we put a time limit to it and not uh, doing to and fro uh, exchange with the objectors? And also, if the objections have been dealt with under certain circum uh, ordinances within a short while, should that be repeated again under other ordinances? We hope that within the first half of the year, we can have some initial thoughts about this, and then we'll come back to the LegCo to give you a report. What about general survey of historic buildings? Uh, I can give a short reply. As you know, we identified 1,400 historic buildings for ranking, and we have already surveyed over 90%. The priority of work is for us to complete the assessment of these 1,400 buildings. As for the newer buildings, you mentioned the post-war buildings. But as you know, uh, in the latter half of the 60s, there were like estates. How should we tackle them and how should we preserve them? Because we have been talking about historic buildings, but now perhaps we should um, have another view on the estates. But then we have to think more about that before we can come back. Next. Thank you, Chair. Secretary, I have read your paper. I can see that you have proposed many measures to increase land supply, but you have not mentioned brownfield sites. If you Look at uh, brownfield sites in the NT. There are 1,500 hectares. It's a big number. And we have container yards, um, auto workshops, and also logistic sites for construction. Have you thought about how you can relocate such operations so that re you can release brownfield sites for other uses? And also, can we consolidate the functions being operated on brownfield sites. Usually, they are short-term tenancies. And therefore, they may not want to make long-term investments in order to enhance their competitiveness because they are STTs. But then, if we can have integrated facilities so that when we release the land, we can also help the investors to enhance their competitiveness. And also, with regard to the 2030-plus briefing, you said that in future, in the lease, um, leases, you will incre include other conditions, but then you are not going to include urban renewal. Why is that so? Will it be that uncompleted projects 
will only be tackled under urban renewal initiatives. And also, if you limit the uh, size of the units, in that you are going to raise the average size of the units, then uh, you may not be able to house as many people. Thank you, Dr. Hong. Well, for the Brown Bill, there's not much mention in the policy address, but in the past, uh, we devote considerable time on it. Well, to uh, sum it up, of the uh, 1,500 or so hectares, about 800 of these hectares we have uh, our development purposes. I must point out, Hong Kong cannot get rid of all the brownfield sites. I've said on logical many times. Well, uh, for the logistics industries and others, is very these brownfield sites are very important. We don't have a policy of getting rid of them altogether. For the the existing brownfield sites, how do we uh, minimize the adverse impacts? while raising its efficiency. That's our objective. For the home site queue, we identified a site to develop multi-story uh, brownfield use buildings. We need to make it work in reality. Well, this will be a private development and also financially viable. We're currently conducting a market sounding exercise. We're pretty much wrapping it up. Later this year, uh, uh, on the use allowed on this multi-level uh, 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 brownfield site uh, uh, buildings, we can report to Dr. Hong. For the uh, flats with a size limit, why we identified a site? Well, we see that if there are no restrictions, they'll be divided into very small units. Let's say uh, for the redevelopment projects, I think Dr. Hong can get what I mean. We can impose restrictions during the lease modification. At this stage, we haven't come to a decision. When uh, we uh, final detail, we will make it public. Uh, whether restricting the unit size will affect the number of units to be supplied. This, the answer is no. When developing private housing, when we uh, release a site in our planning, uh, we're not only plan for a size like 200 square foot. Let's say for the practical size at 280 square foot, uh, there will not be has a huge impact to private housing supply. Next, Mr. Ng Chao Pei. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Okay, I would like to talk about the uh, fighting the COVID-19. This fifth wave is affecting a lot of construction site workers and therefore contributing to works delay. And some of them need to go for mandatory testing or go to quarantine and unable to work. A lot of the, these workers are living from hand to mouth. So this is a livelihood matter. First, I hope the Development Bureau can come up with some measures. Just now, Dr. Lo Wai Kok mentioned, well, due to the drive uh, financing, some of the workers could not get paid. Can the Development Bureau offer a grace period? that uh, offer some kind of a loan uh, or some kind of relief to the sector so that um, the workers will not can get their get paid on time and hope that you can and help the workers on the problem of uh, wage defaults and second in terms of uh, land planning Can you put a quite more priority on public housing? The Hong Kong 2030 plus vision hope to have a sustainable and livable Asia metropolis. 
I know this very ambitious goal. Well, livable should be the key word here. The shortage of housing land was about uh, 680 hectares. We do not have a lot of land, but a shortage of develop um, spade ready land. I agree with developer. They need to as uh, streamline procedures and uh, develop more, produce more land. However, can we uh, give priority to public housing to fulfill this objective of uh, oh, waiting just three years for public housing? Can we achieve? Uh, getting a public housing fed for just three year waiting time by 2030. I hope that uh, the development bureau can give me a clear answer. Thank you, Mr. Mm. Let's talk about the construction industry, which have closely monitored the situation. Look at the employment rate, even as weak was over 10%. In the last year, it dropped to about 5%. For the latest, some construction sites Let's say uh, uh, there will be a workers infected that's into sent to quarantine. These are still isolated uh, incidents. Overall, uh, the construction uh, is still on track. We will also be monitoring the relevant uh, sectors. If necessary, we can launch appropriate measures for the land planning. Well, the government has sent a clear message that you're clearly favoring public housing. Well, the uh, public or private housing mix now raised to 17 to 30 as opposed to 60 to 40 in the past. And for a rezoning of, of some land parcels, we have over 60 sites, about a 210 rezoning, about one third of these. 90% of this land will use on uh, public housing. If we can raise the plot ratio by over 30%, there will be uh, allocated for public housing. I also understand that Mr. Frank Chen yesterday mentioned, let's say by the second five year period, the production of public housing will be doubled. For the next uh, six to ten years, there will be over 200,000 units. For the first ten years, there were about 100,000 units. I remember Secretary Chen said by the second five year period, the queuing situation will improve. I hope they can have a concrete an, uh, an undertaking. Well, I suppose we all heard Mr. Ng. Before I invite the next member, Mr. Kenneth Lau. Well, there are quite a few members who pressed the button. Let me read out. Next, Mr. Kent Lau, Mr. Long Hon Piu, Mr. Chan Hock Fung, Mr. Lau Kwok Fen, Ms. Judy Chen, Mr. Lee Chen Kung, Mr. Lam Shun, Dr. Lam Shun Chu, Mr. Chan Yi Ming, and Ms. Kwong Yok Fun. After Mr. Lau finished, I shall draw the line. We might not have enough time to accommodate because uh, we cannot allow have a second round. I hope you can all manage your time. Next, Mr. Lau, Mr. Kenneth Lau. Mr. Lau? Mr. Lau, can you hear me? Uh, Chairman, let me uh, declare that my family owns land in New Territories, and I'm also the uh, rep for a Lung Time Village, Lung Tan Village. Well, as the Hong Kong is center integrating, the focus will be shift to new territories. The northern metropolis will turn anti north into um, um, into a focus for an urban and rural nexus and turn it into a livable uh, space. I believe that they will help to promote the GBA development, and there will be enormous potential on on C executing the national planning. The policy mentioned about the Lung Reclamation and the replanning of the Tunmun West. 
there are different development options. I welcome these two studies. The Lung Hyung Cook says that um, development, developing NT aligned with the interests of Hong Kong. First, on de uh, developing the northern metropolis, we a lot need a lot of new rail projects, including to in Hong the the uh, Chen Hai Hong Sui Q cross boundary rail as well. The Chin Pei Chui pipeline. There will be automated uh, people mover system. Well, this infrastructure led approach. For example, the high speed rail and the southern central link, there are frequent delays. How can the administration ensure that the northern metropolis rail projects can complete it on schedule and ensure that the infrastructure and the land uses are complementary? On the Longku Chan redevelopment, geographically, is closest to Chiang of Shenzhen. And last year, the government announced the expansion of Chiang that the Shenzhen Corporation Zone uh, 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 has now been expanded with a lot highly value added economic activity in the Longhu Chan for a closer, syner better synergy with the Chiang to foster a uh, deeper Hong Kong Central Corporation. Two questions here. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Lau. Well, there's a change of the philosophy. For any key development, that's how we should proceed. For the rail projects, well, that's uh, under the uh, THP embed, well, I suppose that at the transport panel meeting, uh, you can ask the uh, secretary chair, the development bureau shall do its best to complement the need of the rail projects. For the Lung Ku Chan planning, is more industrial. We've been communicating with Mr. Lau that whether, and he asked him whether uh, you can adjust it. Besides the uh, industrial, uh, can we introduce some uh, highly value added economic activities? For the upcoming planning study, this will be considered. Any supplement? Anything to add? No follow up? Next, Mr. Long Han Biu. I'm the Secretary General for the Hong Kong Real Estate Developer Association. I read the discussion paper and the PowerPoint presentation on the policy address initiatives. The progress is quite satisfactory. On pair 19, we kind of uh, you plan to adopt a building information system and a, a modeling to improve a road safe uh, uh, construction safety as well as a modeling construction. When you talk about the construction 2.0, especially the digitization of government capital works for private projects. Well, uh, the work supervision departments seems not to be uh, mastering the uh, the relevant computer system. A lot of these civil service are need to work from home. A lot of development uh, procedures as well as the interaction of, with the government departments almost come to a standstill. If we can apply the BIM better, then you can actually uh, use it at home. But now, uh, when we can't talk face to face, 
everything comes to a standstill. Based on this, I have three suggestions for the secretary to consider. First, can the bureau take the lead to provide either online or face to face? Uh -oh. So that the author AP, the authorized personnel or the developers can um, uh, talk to the uh, vetting officials. As we all know about the development procedures, well, the file will need to be transferred among different departments. If you can coordinate it as a one-stop service, you can really uh, compress the whole development timetable instead of as uh, trapped in the middle. Secondly, because of the pandemic, site inspection and the issue of occupation permit will involve a lot of people. And we understand because of social distancing or non-group gathering rules, Few people are willing to do this. Can we not make use of live stream online to do it? Number three, when we had SARS last time, you gave consideration to this, and also you actually did this about building covenants. You allowed delays. You issue LAOPN for 2020, but now we are in even more dire straits. I hope you can do this again to continue to allow postponement of building covenants. Secretary, you must be very brief. We, are, we have overrun and many members are waiting to ask questions. I think we need to extend our meeting. Perhaps you can talk to Mr. Long in private. Mr. Mr. Chen Hofeng. Mr. Chen Hofeng. Hello. Thank you, Secretary. Your paper says that 2030 plus has already earmarked 7,300 hectares, so it will be able to meet our demand in the next 30 years. You said 1,000 hectares will come from the artificial island in Kao Yi Chao and 2,300 hectares from the northern metropolis. I know that within the northern metropolis, there will be conservation land. I'd like to know whether the 2,300 hectares include includes land for conservation. If that's the case, then it means there will not be so much land for housing development. In 2030 plus, you said that the per capita space should not be fewer than 280 square feet. But how many more hectares will you need then? And out of the 7,300 hectares, do you think you can meet your own criterion of 280 square meters for a person? And secondly, under the Hong Kong planning guidelines, um, a lot of the guidelines are already outdated, including figures for car parks and also developments for communities. Recently, I know that a public housing block should have only five car parking spaces, but that is not satisfactory. So are you going to do anything about the Hong Kong PSG and modify them? I know that a lot of outlying islands cannot meet the guidelines on the basis of their population. However, the people there also need services. I hope you will review the Hong Kong PSG. And then Harbour Front, 
I thank you for doing a lot along the northern shoreline of Hong Kong Island. But I think the protection of the harbour ordinance will put restrictions on development of the harbour front. As you know, um, the harbour front promenade was broken up because a certain section was used as a carriageway. Uh, I'd like to know whether you will consider modifying or revising the protection of the harbour ordinance so we can have a better waterfront. And then I hope you can consider having a round the island promenade on Hong Kong Island so people can enjoy themselves in that uh, round promenade. Secretary, Mr. Chen, the 41,000 hectares. Now, if you have time, please look into the booklet we issued on the 16th on 2030 plus. Please go to page 37. We have stated there that conservation is not included and it will be for the consideration of the Environment Bureau. I will be quick, Chairman. For Hong Kong people to have more per capita space, we must have faster housing production vis-a-vis -vis the growth of the population. And in the land sale program, we said that if they are for private projects, we should stipulate that the per capita space should be 280 square feet uh, because we don't want to see uncompleted projects. And we have said that to allow people to have better housing, we are thinking that in long-term projects, say, for example, land supply in Khao Yi Chow, we are going to provide 10% to 20% more land for housing development. Uh, this will be for the housing authority. And then as for car parking spaces, the steering department is the transport department. And we will then look reflect that in the Hong Kong PSG. My understanding is that the transport department is inclined to set a higher standard for car parking spaces. But I will take the view of Mr. Chen back to transport department. If we can have better accessibility, uh, along the harbour front, of course, I am all for it, but um, we need to tackle the difficulties. In fact, along the northern shore of the Hong Kong Island, we like to provide a waterfront, but perhaps if you are talking about recreation, then we can refer that to other bureaus. Six more members would like to speak, and please be mindful of the timing. If you ask long questions, the secretary cannot give you appropriate answers. Mr. Lau Kok Fan, can you hear me? Yes. I have simple questions. I have always said that we should also develop NT North. I'm very happy to see the Northern Metropolis Initiative, but then it is going to take a long time. I can see that you are proposing the streamlining of procedures and revising the laws so that a spade-ready land can be provided sooner. I have given you my proposals, and that is to revise the town planning ordinance and also to cut away repeat repetitive procedures so that you can shorten the time for the production of ready land by three to five years. You have now made a proposal. I'd like to know how much time can be saved using your initiative. Secretary, I think we have already launched 11 groups of improvement proposals without necessity to change the land. And people in the sector have told us that uh, that can save anywhere between 6 to 18 months. But uh, we have to put that into practice before we know exactly how much time can be saved. 
It is not that we are going to shy away from time-consuming procedures. Rather, we will have to ensure that the function of the law should not be affected in any way. But we can certainly streamline procedures where they are repetitive. And then we can put the new rules into practice. And practice will let us know how much time will be saved. We hope we can at least save half to a, a year, let's say. But it's not just the time, it's the work to be done. Sometimes the sector has to negotiate with a few different departments on the same matter, but perhaps we can have a one-stop kind of arrangement so you can save time and work. Oh, I can propose a direction for your consideration. And secondly, land resumption. Secretary, you know that uh, there are different land premier to be paid for land resumed in the NT. Will you consider uh, unifying it? Thank you. Um, I have a short answer. The standard rate for paying land premium has been put into practice, and uh, we will apply it to NDAs. We have said that we will not rule out expanding it to other developments. But as you know, the NT covers a very big area. and But the URA is only dividing up Hong Kong into five areas. And of course, later, if we can cut up Hong Kong into more parts, then perhaps we can have finer considerations. But then uh, we don't rule out further expansion. Well, I'm talking about land resumption compensation, not the paying of land premier, uh, secretary. I think you should look into that. And then last, in the last session, you did not deliver what you promised, and that is multi-story buildings to be built on brownfield sites. I know that there are practical difficulties, and that is why you have not come back on this one. Is it because it is non-operational so that you have not delivered? And that is multi-story buildings for brownfield sites. Well, thank you for the reminder. I don't think I have um, reneged on my promise. But then we have to give this very cons careful consideration. And uh, near the end of our consideration, we thought that we should do a market survey. And we should not just dictate it to the people. We want to know whether the market will react positively. And that is why we took time to do the survey. We found that certain brownfield site users can be housed in multi-story buildings, but not all. There are objective limitations. Say if uh, there are large pieces of machinery requiring very high headroom, and sometimes the brownfield site users have low value addedness. As you know, multi-story buildings will fetch higher rents. And we are going to launch a plan uh, later on in the year, and, and that will also cover these points. Next, Mr. Chen Kapui. Ms. Chen Kapui. Thank you, Chen. Uh, Happy New Year to you, Secretary. Same to you, Ms. Chen. Sorry, I pressed the wrong button. Uh, I'm not appearing on the video wall. Now it's back on. I will be brief. First, I have to declare that I am a non-executive director of the URA. I am very glad to hear that the URA will also look into two districts you proposed. But I believe Chai Wan is quite similar to Chin Wan. It is very aged, and there are many aged buildings. As Secretary, I hope you can consider also looking into Chai Wan. As for URA, in your paper, you mentioned MIC quite a bit. Actually, when I talked to the construction industry, it told me that government projects are lagging behind in the use of technology. 
your paper says that you have already supported 800 odd private enterprises to use MIC or modular integrated construction but you have only applied it to 70 projects in the public sector well uh, can we uh, able to uh, apply this new technology more widely well in the year eight I noticed for example like this BIM building information modeling managed to save a lot of manpower and resources and I heard from Mr. Long what should the government uh, take a bigger lead in adopting these technologies on harborfront enhancement what well, is the least controversial and well received by all well uh, we have less projects on the island side compared to Kowloon well I support the concept of green harborfront well, the uh, people can walk from uh, Western District to the Eastern District. Well, there'll be uh, after the boardwalk under the Island East Corridor, you can actually go all the way to Ch Chai Wan. What have you considered the Victoria Road carries huge potential. There's a very nice uh, sea view along the road. I hope that you can undertake a study to see that you can develop a green promenade. Thirdly, on the squatter policy, the last term some other members asked about the policy. And sometimes I will receive some requests for assistance. The lands department asking them to demolish. It used to be a wooden hut and and when turned into a concrete hut and they were asked them to demolish and revoke the squatter license even though the squatters are scattered well therefore the ball at 0.38 million registered squatters there may be others too are unregistered unlicensed does the government have a more longer term squatter policy or do I have any ideas if you try to face them out uh, asking them to uh, abolish the but somehow we allow them to redevelop or to uh, repair if I'm a squatter resident I will find that confusing I hope the development bureau can come with some longer term policy I have to be strict since um, Mrs. Chen used up her questions so therefore I can't let the secretary answer you the few other members behind you we're already overrunning next Mr. Lee Chen To Mr. Lee Chen Kang a few days ago I went to a, a Ta Ku Leng oh, uh, in the future it will become very prosperous due to the northern metropolis etc and also um, on the beltway and the, log and the logistic hub well for this uh, remote land will the government com comprehensive review the mode of development for example uh, the noxious facilities like uh, landfills the cemeteries or the abattoirs on sewage treatment plants so uh, for the bureau would you uh, have review this kind of noxious facilities obnoxious facilities well thank you Mr. Lee for giving you the chance well take the sewage plant for example well, if we need to accommodate 2.5 million people, then we must have a sewage treatment plant. We can't simply relocate it to the Hong Kong Island. When construct these facilities, how to reduce the odor and reduce the visual impact. And you can see plenty of examples abroad. These kind of facilities can be really nice. According to the CE, can look like a park. 
Well, uh, let's say for Saddle Ridge, Sandy Ridge. Well, there will be a columbaria and cremation facilities. The CE claimed they will uh, cancel such plans. Well, the crematorium will stay. However, will ensure that it will be as nice as a park. So that uh, it will be a congruent to the surroundings. On expediting uh, land supply, use technology to s uh, expedite the land supply. I support this. However, the construction industry has a manpower shortage. For example, uh, demolition or uh, form uh, molding must be done manually. It cannot be replaced by technology. Would you consider importing a uh, foreign labor? On the uh, water supply or drainage a sewage project, would you consider public-private partnerships to speed up the construction so that uh, we can be quicker in uh, f site formation and construction? Thank you, Mr. Lee's question. Let me first take the second question. Where appropriate, Mr. Lee may know, and for the old Castle Peak Road, well, the main sewage is a maximum facility. Then we'll ask the developer to treat the sewage on site. It's actually possible and connect it back to the main sewage pipe in the future. And therefore, we'll take the same approach. We're appropriate for the northern metropolis uh, for the time and resource or guarantee that we'll consider. For the workers, our policy is this. We shall first uh, make sure we shall hire Hong Kong workers first. If there's a confirmed shortage, there's a mechanism in place to tap into uh, overseas and mainland labor. This fact shall continue. Next, Dr. Lam Shun Chu. Thank you, Chairman and good. Morning, secretaries. I have four questions. Well, to make use of my time, I will as asked all of all one uh, first on land resumption. Paragraph five mentioned that top that they could uh, invoke the land resumption ordinance to resume a uh, Kuchong North and Fanling North and Hongshui Kiwi and Hachun NDA of about five hundred hectares. Has the government confirmed the legitimacy before invoking the LRO to reduce the litigation risk? On expanding urban renewal, Paris 7 and 8, they're according to the planning department. Assuming that demolishing all the existing buildings by 2048, the buildings age 70 or above. With about one thousand, there will be about uh, over three hundred seventy thousand. Well, uh, with a slow pace of urban renewal, there's no way that we can catch up with the aging of the buildings. Would the government consider introducing more uh, measures or incentives to encouraging uh, buying more buildings? For example, tr uh, transferring the uh, pot ratios by merging different land parcels, you can merge and transfer or concentrate the plot ratio. Uh, would it consider any incentives in, uh, to add green and sustainable elements into their housing projects? On streamlining development process, are you set at the outset? In pair 9 and 10, you mentioned at the last budget mentioned, till but since 2013, the government identified 216 sites. Well, due to various uh, factors, the overall progress uh, was slow. But only uh, February 2021, only 70% were resumed. On streamlining development concerns and try to uh, introduce legislative amendments to rezone a land What's the average time required? Upon the amendment, 
how much time can you save? And for the land sharing pilot scheme on Annex 3 and 4, mentioned that the land sharing pilot scheme is one of the options for the task laid down by the task force on land supply. But the start applications on May 2020 only received three applications. Well, the progress has been slow. What were the main reason for the poor response? Is there any incentives to encourage more developers to act, participate? Let me be brief with Dr. Lam's question. First, on the land resumption, each time we actually established the purpose before going ahead, and the past proceedings inspired companies, for example, like for public housing and schools and roads. These are definitely in line with public interests. We hope to speed up an urban renewal. And, and what Mr. Lam proposed is what we are doing. Not only uh, the URA can enjoy this, with all the same for other private developers. During the development, currently we already have policy and incentives in place. For example, like the Beam Council, I can explain the separate occasion. If you meet certain requirements, that you can enjoy a bonus of floor space. On planning, well, it took about 18 and a half years. After Sri Lanka procedures, we and cut the time to eight to nine months. Next, Ms. Chen Yutming. Uh, good afternoon, Secretary. In the policy address, I mentioned about the Northern Metropolis, that well, the obnoxious facilities and then has facilities like Apatow and quarantine centers and sewage treatment plant will be reprovisioned uh, near the Lantang uh, border control point. Can the secretary explain uh, the underlying reasons? Just as the secretary mentioned that the sewage treatment plant cannot be relocated to the Hong Kong Island, then why can you put it in Northern Metropolis along the uh, boundary economic belt? The secretary mentioned about the uh, Sandy Ridge uh, crematorium. Well, now that IT is to focus on Northern Metropolis, why can you reconsider or replan for the piece piece of land into a science city or a university a city? I hope that the secretary can re reply. Uh, thank you, Ms. Chan's uh, comments. Okay, I will be quite uh, brief. From east to west, we talk about this over 30 km, just like from a uh, distance from Lowu to Tim Sa Chui. For the funeral facilities, we have such facilities in Sha Chin. For the sewer treatment, well, it they have to be uh, close to the district they serve. I will not repeat myself. Well, in the future, there will be two for five million population. They do need sewer treatment capacity. Well, not everyone welcomes such facilities. As to how do we make sure that it should blend in visually to and minimize its adverse impact? If we turn into something like a park, they could be open to the public. Well, the Vember for the, some of the facilities, like the abattoirs, what currently is under the uh, Food and Health Bureau, will work together. As for Mr. Chen's uh, comments, well, like the abattoir, as you can see, the abattoir is quite close uh, to the uh, body control points. Well, we need to consider the supply that mainly comes from the mainland. Uh, and well, for the, we need to consider how the design and the appearance and the transport 
uh, 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 traffic will not lead to an adverse impact to the community. There's something we're working towards. Just a very quick one. If you concentrate the obnoxious facilities near the BCPs and the northern metropolis, there's other, other land in other areas. Why can't can you consider the other locations? Well, for, you already positioned the northern metropolis and the IIT. If you put the obnoxious facility in one place, uh, how can you uh, invite the facilities? How can you uh, invite more IT enterprise in the area? I'm very happy for this opportunity to communicate with a member. But actually, let me take Loma Chao and Wong Kong as an example. We have a lot of land there, 200 odd hectares, and it's devoted to innovation and technology. And also in Hong Shui Kiu, we have high end logistics industries. I'm just saying that we need to situate community needs in certain places. And of course, we have, may have different views in the selection of sites, but then we have to look at the overall environment, the transport infrastructure, etc. And then we will talk to the relevant bureaus to see whether a site is appropriate. But I know I'm repeating myself, Chairman. And I hope the member understands that we have to have all these considerations. I hope the Bureau Secretary will do your planning again. I think I, many members share my view. Oh, very good. Last member, Ms. Kong Yuk Fun. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, Secretary. Let's you talk about land resumption. By 2030, you will be resuming 700 hectares of land. I am glad to see such developments, but I also worry when you can provide the information. If you are going to resume so much land, a lot of the public will be affected. Hong Kong people may worry about their private property rights. Uh, I wonder if the Secretary can give me more information. And also on the web page of the Department of Justice, we can see that in the past few years, whether it is a judicial review or just a case at court, a lot of these have to do with land resumption. How can you reduce um, court cases if you're going to resume so much land? Have you talked to the Department of Justice? And secondly, streamlining procedures. I can see that in the paper, you say that in March, you will have specific proposals, and then you'll come back in the middle of the year. In other words, from your corporate proposals until coming to LegCo with a paper, there are just a few months' time. How can you consult the public and the professional bodies? Because you're talking about streamlining procedures, and that may affect uh, individuals and groups. Number three, redevelopment. Secretary, do you have options how you can redevelop large clusters of old buildings, it's, say in Quarry Bay, Jordan, and North Point. These sites can include 500 to 1,000 units. Can you quicken the pace of such development of old building clusters and then urban renewal? I know that they may be cash strike. Um, do you think the URA has the resources to undertake its projects? And from what I know, sewage treatment and also transportation are hurdles for urban renewal in Yao Chin Wong. What are your solutions? And lastly, in Cheng Shuan Lai Chi Kok, we know that um, single buildings are being redeveloped. How can you encourage developers to do more combined redevelopment? Thank you for the questions. When we resume land, we would have confirmed the public benefit before we'll do it. But as to when land resumption will be announced, well, we cannot do it at too early a stage because that is market sensitive. And there may be an effect on the landowner or land user. Usually, um, it is when we issue the preclearance survey, then we may 
do the announcement. Uh, but I, I think it's not easy to change this. As for redevelopment, the URA has said very clearly it cannot work on its own. It cannot renew the entire Hong Kong by itself. We hope we can introduce market forces, including uh, streamlining the systems and also interchangeability of plot ratios and also changing the compulsory sale thresholds. Uh, we hope to draw the market in. Recently, the URA projects have seen changes. Uh, you also mentioned that sometimes it is just for single buildings, but not anymore. Uh, URA is now planning based and by redeveloping buildings, we hope to also enhance the environment for the entire area. And also about uh, sewage uh, treatment, we will certainly do the appropriate assessment first. Okay, that is the end for the discussion of this item. I thank members for speaking up and I thank the Secretary and also all the representatives of the Bureau and Departments. Now we go to the next agenda item, proposals to appoint subcommittee on policy issues. I have received proposals from two members, and these are to propose the setting up of a subcommittee to study policy issues relating to the harbour front. This is from Mr. Leung Hei. And then from Mr. Wang Yun Shan, to set up a subcommittee to study policy issues relating to the use of land between Hong Kong and Shenzhen. Like to see whether members would like to speak. Anyone? If you'd like to speak, please press the button on the Zoom system. Any members who would like to speak on these two proposals to set up subcommittees? If not, Would members support the relevant proposal? These are just proposals. There are many panels who would also like to set up subcommittees. And personally, I need to consider your proposals, like the one on uh, the harbour front. Uh, whether it should be a subcommittee or whether we can ask the Bureau to give us regular updates. Or we can have a spe special meeting for a briefing of uh, updates. We can do it that way as well. If members have no objection, I can see two members having indicated their intention to speak. First, Mr. Leung Hei and then Dr. Lo Wai Kwok. Let, let's check the timing. I may have to extend our meeting by at most 15 minutes. Mr. Leung Hei, four minutes. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for your view. Let me explain why I'm proposing to set up this subcommittee. Uh, this is because it is a standing item. It cannot be resolved at one go. We need to see how the waterfront is managed. We'd like to link up 
the eastern and western part of the harbour front, but we have to overcome many difficulties. Very often, in certain places, the harbour front cannot be connected because there are private developments or because there are engineering prospects. So we need to do follow up. And also management. We have seen such problems already. There are dogs dirtying the place. We need to follow up on that. We'd like to also see whether the project is executed according to schedule. And I believe we need to do coordination amongst different quarters. Uh, therefore, follow up has to be done over the years. If we don't keep it on the agenda, our vision, and that is east west connection on the northern shore, now is cut up into five to six sections. Chairman, I hope you understand our request. Yes, that's very clear. Personally speaking, I like to concentrate on policies, but if members don't object, we can take it forward. But uh, Dr. Lo Wei Kwok first. Thank you, Chair. Chairman, I think you have told us one principle. There are many issues under the umbrella of development. Which ones? should be followed up within the panel so that at the appropriate time the Bureau will report to us progress of projects and whether we should set up a subcommittee on other issues. We need to give this careful consideration. Chairman, I know that we are not going to make a decision today as other panels are making suggestions. Some subcommittees will also be set up under the House. On the one hand, we should consider what the chairman said, and that is, is there a need to set up a subcommittee? And is the subcommittee the most effective channel to achieve our objective? Because after all speaking, the LegCo is not an executive department. We are here to reflect public opinion and also give our views on policies. Execution-wise, we should only reflect what we see to the departments. Should we go for a subcommittee? Because subcommittees will be using a lot of the secretariat's resources. We should therefore be very cautious about this. It is not that I'm supporting or not supporting the proposal. I'm just saying we should consider the issue in this direction. Chairman, I believe the clarification is clear in, in that we're not going to make a decision today. Thank you, Dr. Lo. As I said, um, if you propose to set up a subcommittee under the development panel. If you don't think it's a problem, well, but still, we may not be able to do it because, as Dr. Lowe said, the LegCo only has limited resources. Which subcommittees can be set up? Well, we need to put a limit to it because we don't have unlimited resources. We need to queue up. And if we are just waiting for the setup of a subcommittee and not find the find the uh, time in the right manner to discuss the issues, then uh, in fact we are delaying our own discussion. I hope the relevant members will consider this. Mr. Wang Yunshan, you also have four minutes. Chairman, members, I'd like to follow up. After hearing the secretary and members, I can see that when we 
discussed the northern metropolis, uh, which is just next to Shenzhen. Now, how can we have coordinated development to the bureau? Apart from a certain railway, railway, uh, we have to consider sewage and uh, electricity supply, etc. The important thing is to make long-term planning and strategies. Many members, including Mr. Michael Teen and others, have said how we should uh, plan and position so-called obnoxious facilities within the northern metropolis. I think this is a very important thing before we start to build the northern metropolis. I don't sure that our planning and design will have a close a strategic collaboration with Sanjian. Well, members may be aware that they both members are proposing to set up subcommittee, and in their letter they have listed out the terms of reference, the work plan, and a the timetable. These are all clear in their letters. Just I would like to remind members that should we adopt the format of a subcommittee, as there are resource constraints and not all these subcommittee proposals. can be formed in the short term. On the two members' proposals, I would like to know that if members agree on their proposals. Once we agree, well, I will check that we all agree. Then we need to follow our procedures in proposing them. Mr. Professor Lamciolo, you would like to speak? Four minutes. Just one note the procedures. The chairman uh, made himself clear and on also agree that at the logical level, we should focus on policy the deliberations. Well, whether we agreed or not, well, the chairman said that, that uh, the formation may not be guaranteed. What are the steps? Let's do all the 18 panels. Uh, may like to set up subcommittees under th um, and some individual members may propose them at the House Committee uh, under the House. Well, due to resource constraint, there's a cap on the number of subcommittees. At the end, it shall be decided by the members which are the ones that will be formed first. Once a subcommittee is formed, then we can start working right away. If we can't uh, form them, then we have to be put on queue. When considering these proposals, For the house, it will be decided by the House Committee members. Thank you, Chairman. And Dr. Lowe just now pointed out we need to use our resources wisely, and some of the topic can be discussed at panel, or some of the issues are standing with lots of problems, then the panel may not have the time to allow for adequate discussion or there are uh, frequent developments then we, then we shall consider whether we should form a subcommittee. 
So that's my advice to members. I couldn't see any objections. Well, I assume that we all agree, or at least a majority. Shall we? I suppose there's no objections. So that's the end of our discussion. Any other business? There's nothing under AOB. I now declare the meeting adjourned. Thank you.